a trade for old friend Jake Odorizzi could really help the Twins in 2022. Talk more about it on today's episode of Lockdown Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Friday. Happy Friday, February 4th. And I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thank you for making Locked On Twins your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. Thank you for sticking with me through this lockout. It's it's not in a good spot right now. And I've contested throughout. I never thought there'd be games missed because of this lockout. For the first time, I'm starting to feel that that could be false, that there could be games missed here, that this could go into spring training, cause a delay to the season, maybe even a chunk of the season. Just doesn't feel like they're anywhere close. Now, I will say, I would still predict that there will not be games missed because they're not close until they are, right? These things, I think, come together very, very fast. I think all of a sudden you could hear, oh, the sides are close. Oh, a deal is done in 48 hours, right? It can happen so fast. It's just making concessions, pressure, leverage, negotiations. It's a deal. And deals usually are done in the waning minutes as a deadline approaches. Without a deadline, there's no reason to get a deal done especially for the owner side, because they hold all the leverage. What we know is that the owners don't mind missing games as much as the players. The players need their game checks. The owners make so much money from the postseason. And as we saw in 2020, it's a great example. Missing regular season games is really not a huge deal for them. They lose money on attendance. Don't get me wrong. They lose money. Not even close to the players and their game checks. So that's why the owners in Major League Baseball is digging their heels into the sand, and they're testing the players. We know this. So there's no reason for them to agree to a deal where they're not getting exactly what they want right now because they know that as the deadline approaches for spring training and opening day, and it's it's coming, like 10 days I think camps are supposed to open, they know that the players will have to, they think, break. And that's that's what we're looking at right now. And you're seeing the players speak out on social media You're seeing a lot of things, and it feels like it's really coming to a head in one way or another. And and one way could be we miss games. Another way could be the owners finally make those concessions as the deadline approaches. But we'll see what happens following it, keeping an eye on it. I also said early this offseason I was not going to be a daily negotiations podcast. We're we're focused on how the Twins can get better, the, the future of the Twins. I was so sick of it in 2020. I was just I was done with the negotiations. But we will keep an eye on it because the season depends on it. The opening day depends on it. Twins are supposed to open March 31st in Chicago against the White Sox. That's a month, I guess, two months away, a little less than two months away. So hopefully they get it done. Would love to have a baseball season. Thinking about a baseball season is just is so exciting. And part of that reason is the Twins' young starters we talk about all the time. And we're going to continue on today and kind of finish our youth movement in the rotation conversation for now by talking about how that's how is that going to look? How is the youth movement going to look a couple different ways the twins could go with this youth movement in 2022 specifically we're going to look at this summer and how that's going to look so we've looked at who we've looked at when we've looked at why a little bit this is the case why is there a youth movement we're going to look at how today how is that going to happen how is that going to look this summer for the twins so we're going to do that I want to talk about a trade idea I wrote about at Twins Daily. Open Cold Open was about Jake Odorizzi and why I think he can make some sense for the Twins via trade. I want to talk about him today, too. So when you look at Odo, I posted this on Twins Daily, and there was there was mixed reactions. Some people were like, I would love to have Odorizzi back. Some people were like, that's terrible. Why would you want Jake Odorizzi back? doesn't make any sense. The Twins are in a really interesting spot in the rotation, and, and it can get confusing because – it's not. It doesn't have to be black or white. There can be some nuance. I think there's a subset of fans who I totally understand, but there's a subset of fans who, A, complain about where the Twins are at in their rotation, which 100% I do too. But also, B, when I propose adding Jake Odorizzi, who in his last 1,110 innings pitch has been an above-league average starter, they say, yuck. Yuck, why why would we want Jake Odorizzi? But also complain 
about not having enough good starters. That that that's tricky to me. That confuses me. And I know part of that is we want quality starters. So do I. But Jake Odorizzi is better than nothing. He's he's an above average starter in the last like seven seasons. I think that is going back to his Tampa Bay days. And it, it wasn't great last year for Odo. 2020, we know, was a disaster, an injured disaster, but it was for a lot of guys. It was a weird year. Adding Jake Odorizzi back to this rotation makes it a lot better than it is today, right? So I guess I don't understand that sentiment. I could understand why would you trade for Jake Odorizzi? He's going to take up a spot for one of the young guys. You want to give them experience. I get that too, and, and that's the way that we're heading. But Jake Odorizzi gives you some stability, and he's not a number one. He's not a number two. He might not be a number three at this point. He might be a low-end number three, and the Twins have Ober and Ryan, who we view in that same group. Maybe Dylan Bundy, if he can get back to 2020, is in that same group, or at least a version of 2020 is in that group. So they have enough. They need frontline starters, but we know that. We've known that, that they need more than just Jake Odorizzi to improve this rotation, but he would improve this rotation. Let's talk more about Odo and how this uh, young wave is going to look after this word from a Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good. You'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill, you want to eat healthy, but it just gets so boring. By like week three, you might be thinking, this is just not worth it. Where's the chocolate? Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and most Built Bars contain 130 calories and 4 grams of net carbs. Here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever. Throw out all those sugary or calorie-filled treats and replace them with Built Bars. Built Bars are healthy. Built Bars really are delicious. I can attest, they are delicious. The mint chocolate, so, so good. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you again for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. So going back to that, Jake Odorizzi, fans who want to see improvement in the rotation but scoff at solidly above average pitchers when I propose them in deals. Odorizzi is set to make $8 million in 2022. If he was a free agent, he'd probably sign for that. Five, six, seven. Eight's probably on the upper end, but that's good for the Twins if they're trading for him. It's going to cost less. Then he has an $8.5 million player option in 2023, which makes this even trickier, I think, from the Astros' standpoint, who have a rotation of now Justin Verlander, Lance McCullers Jr., Framber Valdez, Luis Garcia, Jose Arquiti, Christian Javier, so many pitchers for the Astros. Makes Odorizzi expendable. So from the Astros' viewpoint, trading Odorizzi makes sense. From Jake Odorizzi's viewpoint, getting traded makes sense because he's looking at like a bullpen role in 2022. And, and teams need six, seven, eight, nine starters in any given season. But for Odorizzi, he gets that every five days spot in a rotation. For the Astros, they get to move his contract off the books and don't have to worry about his player option next year. If he has a tricky 2020, a down 2020, he's going to pick that up, that $8.5 million player option. So they don't have to worry about that. They can move them. And for the Twins, you're adding a mid-rotation starter. You're adding a guy, again, who has a 394 ERA since 2014. I'm not saying Jake Odorizzi is amazing. We know who he is. We know what to expect from Jake Odorizzi. It's fastballs up in the zone. He's not going to last more than five innings, a lot of his starts. But a lot of those starts, he'll give you five quality innings. And he'll give you a chance to win. 2019, shut down right-handed hitters. Just shut them down. Lefties got him a little bit. But he shut down righties. I think when you're facing a White Sox team with Aloy Jimenez, with Jose Abreu, with Tim Anderson, with Luis Robert, with all these guys, it's important to have good right-handed starters. The Twins do have a nice crop of right-handed starters coming, and we're going to talk about them today and what that's going to look like. Adding Odorizzi, though, who's got a ton of experience in this league, has pitched at Target Field, has pitched for the Twins, loved his time in Minnesota by all accounts. I think it makes sense. And you ask what a deal would look like. I don't think it would be crazy. I don't think that this would cost a whole lot a deal for Jake Odorizzi. I think you're looking at a couple low-level prospects maybe. Maybe Houston eats a couple million to get a better prospect, or maybe the Twins just take his contract. But the Twins are in a spot where they, they have $91 million on the books. They can take on $8 million in salary from Jake Odorizzi and be okay and still go sign Carlos Rodon 
still go trade for Sonny Gray. They can still make other moves while bringing in Odorizzi. And if he struggles and he doesn't pitch well, well, you might put him back into the role he would have been in Houston, which is maybe move him to the bullpen. Maybe you skip starts. Maybe you have a six-man rotation. There's a lot of options here. He does have that player option, which I would prefer that he didn't. But again, that brings down his cost in trade. That ups Houston's willingness, I think, to make the trade. And it just it makes sense to me from all three sides. And it only matters if it makes sense to the Astros and Twins, not to order Izzy. But I think it would benefit all three sides. I wrote a lot more about this at twinsdaily.com, breaking it down, the money, Odorizzi's numbers, why I think it makes sense. But I think it does. And again, I can see the argument of if you're not going to go get quality rotation members, don't even bother at all and just let the young guys come up and, and this youth movement and the rotation fully happen in 2022. I get that. But if the Twins after the lockout, aren't adding even pitchers on the level of Jake Odorizzi, which is, I would put him on the Pineda, Greinke, that same level. If you're not adding pitchers like Odorizzi, you, you don't give yourself a chance in 2022. There's just, the rotation is, you're working from nothing, basically, at that point. Ober's got injury history. Ober and Ryan, really excited about them and, and what they could do this summer, but we're talking about guys with like a combined 25 starts in the major leagues. So I, I don't know if you go into this season with this current set, first of all, you don't even have enough starters to, to go get through Chicago. I mean, you can go, you can go Ryan over Bundy and then you're coming back and you're like, who's our four Randy Dobnak, you know, Dobnak's your four, you had a seven plus ERA last year. And I, I think Dobnak bounces back this year. Don't get me wrong, but you, you catch my drift. You know, you know what we're looking at here and it's, it's really nothing. So if you're not even adding Jayco to Rizzi level starters, that, that ain't good. And and for this too, I think Odorizzi gives you an opportunity. It, I think the trade would be so much just like signing him as a free agent. And if Odorizzi was a free agent right now, he'd make sense to sign. The Twins would sign Odorizzi for a year and eight million. He's got the player option for eight and a half. And then they would go out and trade for that frontline starter we've been talking about that they need this whole offseason. So what's the difference? Odorizzi's a known commodity. We know him. He likes Minnesota. Can get righties out consistently. Going to give you five good innings, most starts. That's more than the Twins can even imagine getting out of their four and five spots in the rotation right now. Um, or at least their one and two spots, one, two, and three, because maybe Bundy's more of a six than he is a five. Uh, Jake Odorizzi, though, I think makes some sense. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's talk more about the youth movement and the rotation, what that could look like this summer after this word from Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game next week. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. Bet Online has up to the minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet Online is where the game starts. Again, Bet Online has you covered all season. It's really more props, odds, lines than you can even imagine than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Youth movement in the rotation. We've talked about why, we've talked about who, we've talked about when. How is this going to look? I think it's going to be interesting because whatever the Twins do after the lockout, is going to dictate the pace of their starters. How long the lockout goes is going to dictate the pace of their starters. Because if the minor league season gets underway and all these guys are getting – like Jordan Balazovic at St. Paul getting starts and Yohan Duran's getting starts and, and Cantorino and, and Winder and they all look good and then the major league season starts like three weeks or a month later, they could start the season with those guys in the rotation, right? I mean, that would be insane. That's an insane outcome here is they, they get those starts at AAA while the Twins are not playing because of the lockout, because they're still locked out, and then they're ready to go. That's one way it could look. Another way it could look is they start on time at the same time as the Saints and the Surge. They start at the same time. You see what I think is going to happen is uh, Michael Pineda edition, uh, Jake Odorizzi edition, and they go into the season just trying to tread water for the first month. Um, and then you're going to see 
those young guys come up for injury. You're going to see them come up if Pineda's banged up. Because we know if they if they resign Michael Pineda, Big Mike, he's got to go on the injured list at times. They have to shut him down because he's just he, – he can't get through a full season. We've seen that in his time for the Twins. So coming up for injury, coming up for spot starts, coming up for ineffective starts from guys currently in the rotation – that's how it's going to look. And I think you're going to see, we went through the order, Winder, Balzavic, Duran, Drew Stratman, Ober and Ryan are already up. And then you get kind of to that secondary group who could make their debuts um, in 2022. But that's that's another way it could look. They could, they could expedite these guys super quickly. So they could not do anything really after the lockout. Dobnak's in the rotation. Their five is Josh Winder out of spring training. And they're just funneling. They're just funneling. Dominic struggles. You go to AAA. We're calling up Balzavic. Balzavic, you struggle. You're going back down. Yohan coming up. Matt Cantorino moving up quickly. He's going to double AA, A, AAA. He's up. It could go that that fast. It could be just this revolving door of, of getting looks at guys in the majors. That that's another way. Um, the that that first one that I mentioned is really intriguing. That is that is a possible outcome here. As unlikely as that is, or looks more and more likely at this point is the minor league season starting on time and the major league season not. And those two things not matching up. I'm pretty sure the minor league, they, they're going to play on. So we're going to be covering minor league games if there's no Twins games to talk about. Uh, you know I love doing that. We got our prospect Fridays. I can't wait to get those going again when we look at like the 10 best performances of the last week in the Twins system. Jose Miranda dominated that, as did uh, Josh Winder and – at times, Jordan Balzavic, he had 26 and two-thirds innings scoreless, I believe was the number. Uh, insane. But there's another another way the Twins could do it. How I think they're going to do it is that second one. I think it's the second one I mentioned. I think they're going to add a Pineda, an Odorizzi, a Grinky, try to fill out the rotation. Dobnak will be the five. And then I think Balzavic, Winder, Duran, those guys will be ready immediately. Cole Sands, they'll be ready to come up on call for injury ineffectiveness or just to get a look because they're succeeding at, at double A and triple A. So that's how I think it's going to look. Another possible outcome is the twins do go trade for Luis Castillo. They sign Carlos Rodon. They fill out the rotation. And it, it, in some ways it's the same. So the, those guys are coming up due to injury, but that's also putting more quote. It's putting a, a, a higher requirement more requirement on what they do at double A AA and triple A. So they, they need to succeed at a higher level at double A AA and triple A if the Twins fill out their rotation in a respectable way after the lockout. If they don't, if Josh Weiner has two or three starts where he gives up two or three runs, the Twins can call him up. But if they do and they're trying to compete and they're trying to win with a rotation that looks respectable, you might not see Winder until he has like five good starts in a row and the Twins get a look at him for injury. You might not see Balazovic until he really figures out the changeup command, which improved last year. So that's another way. Uh, I mentioned Winder and Balzavic because I think they're going to be first and second. And I think Dron's going to be third. Uh, that's that's the way I think it's going to look. And then it gets interesting at double A. It gets interesting with Cantorino. It gets interesting with Duran. It, it gets interesting at that point. Um, but those are some ways it could look. Thank you so much for listening today. Thank you for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you again for listening. Have a great day, and go Twins.